everybody, this is Nia Feiler. I'm here with the Evolutionary Astrology Forecast. This time from November 5th to 6th until the 23rd from the lunar eclipse in Taurus and until the new moon. So this is where I talk about the sky and how it affects us all, all zodiac signs, this celestial soup we're all swimming in. So first of all, we are in a time that doesn't have a lot of energy in the sky. There's almost no fire in the sky. Mars is retrograding. It's squaring Neptune. And whenever this happens, and this is going to be here on and off until January, we have this feeling of lethargy, of, of being tired and frustrated with it all. And we could want to run away from it and just forget about it and rest and recuperate. God is forbid we could utilize drugs, substances, alcohol, you know, um, whatever we can to dull the constant bombardment, bombardment, bombardment of <laughs> bombardment of life and reality upon our shores. We could comfort ourselves with sex and food or shopping. But of course, we know these are all not the ways. The best ways are to channel it to spirit and creativity. Nevertheless, this is here until January, you know, and this is something you'll have to deal with. So please don't add feelings of guilt to the fact that you're already feeling lethargic and unwilling, you know, to um, buckle up and, and do whatever is needed. You know, there is a feeling like that in the sky. And we're all feeling it and it won't be any better by you feeling bad about the fact you're feeling bad you'll only feel worse <laughs> hope you got that you know so it's the first thing I had to say the second thing is that we are entering a very special lunar eclipse in Taurus because it's a time of a superior conjunction of Mercury and a time that Venus is still conjunct the Sun they're both involved with the sun, opposing, uh, opposing the moon and Uranus, and squaring, teak squaring, Saturn. This is a lunar eclipse that can certainly um, prove to have breakthroughs, to, to bring breakthroughs, both on the geopolitical level, both on the scientific, aeronautical, or space uh, exploration levels. And both in our personal lives, things we've been struggling with, you know, changes, abrupt, radical changes of situations in our lives. Not even talking about, you know, that this is something that is, is, is a natural thing for eclipses. We're in the middle of two eclipses. We've had a solar eclipse. Now we're going to have a blood moon. By the way, Stephen Forrest has a very beautiful explanation about the blood moon. The only light that really curves around the atmosphere are the red and orange lights that we see at sunset and, 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 and sunrise. And when the earth is just in front of the sun, obscuring the sun's light on the moon, the only rays that can actually curve around the atmosphere and get to the moon are all the lights of the sunsets slash uh, sunrises, you know, of earth at the same time. So Stephen says, imagine how wonderful it would be to be sitting there in a spacesuit with a soft drink or a beer <laughs> and, 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 you know, in a comfortable chair and just see all the sunsets or sunrises on Earth at the same time. It's very romantic. It's nothing spooky like the blood moon myths we all grew up upon, you know. <coughs> what is a lunar eclipse? A lunar eclipse is a time of deep transformation. Not in the outside uh, 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 circumstances so much as the inner, inner software that, you know, makes up the, the priorities and the values that in, in, in turn, you know, create the way that we actually do things in the world outside. Our likes and dislikes, things we find important, things we want to achieve. How we feel about things changes, you know. It's a change in our emotional psyche. There's a deep transformation on the emotional level, on the Plutonic level, on the Scorpionic level. Remember, this is the same axis, Taurus Scorpio. And Venus is deeply involved. But every time there's a lunar eclipse, it's a Plutonic 
emotional transformative energy that is taking place. And these changes, even if they're not comfortable, even if they're challenging at the moment, or oh God is forbid tragic, are important for our development, our future, and our evolution. And I hope that whether they are blessed or challenging, you find what I said comforting. <laughs> the fact that all of this uh, <clears throat> construction in the skies T-squaring Saturn gives it the stress, gives us the understanding that we don't have any time to fool around. That, you know, we mean business. This is serious. It's a threat of present karma becoming worse because of doing the same mistakes again. Or, on the other hand, dealing with it, you know rising up to the challenge, doing things the way they need to be done, responsibly, buckling up, putting our chin up, and, and building things differently, changing things. It squares Uranus, it squares the Moon, it squares the Sun, it squares Venus, it squares Mercury, and we're feeling it throughout the couple of weeks we're in. So both on the political, geopolitical level, you know, we could see breakthroughs we could see on the other hand you know we could see like new new treaties and uh, agreements we could see uh, countries pulling out of international organizations and treaties and, and, and agreements as well we could see the status quo changing and both in our personal lives you know relationships with others our relationship with ourselves, with our self-value with money everything is up to change development and renewal this time. The whole idea, you know, the cerebral part of thinking how we should shape things forward, you know, and this is a superior conjunction for Mercury, it's a Kazemi, it's a great time to think about the philosophy that guides you. Sun opposing Uranus, amazing time for change. All of this can bring breakthroughs not only on the general level but in our personal lives things we've been struggling and stuck with for a long time can change it is also a great time for advancements in aeronautics and space uh, and uh, exploration and science and things like that and as we head into the of course the eclipse is on the 8th could be on the 9th wherever you are in the world and then on the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, the 15th, we're starting to get the sunny atmosphere, you know. We're getting a trine to Neptune, to Mercury, to the Sun, to Venus. And we're getting a, a, a sextile to Pluto, which is, is Venusian aspect. And then we're getting a trine to Jupiter by Mercury and Venus and the Sun. A little further on down the months so the sunshine is growing in our life the feeling of optimism and don't worry about things it's all going to be okay is growing in our lives and it could be a false optimism we could be feeling omnipotent when we really don't have the time the money and the energy to spend it all all the time on everybody and everything so the worst thing to do would to be was is, is to be overly optimistic at this time and not connected to realism and pragmatism. Nevertheless, this could be a time that is soaked with uh, muses and, and uh, you know, the creativity. And this could produce the greatest songs and stories and art and dances and shows and movies. This could be a wonderful time in relationships and love and an affluent time with money and enjoyment. And, and this could be a time of renewal of, and broadening of our horizons because we have Mercury trining uh, Jupiter. We have Venus trining Jupiter on the 15th already. It's exact. And the sextile allows us to materialize things with other people around us. 
And then on the 19th, we have Mercury conjunct Venus. And on the 20th, it's the Sun uh, uh, trining Jupiter exact. So it really brings us a feeling that everything is going to be okay, that there's a sunny atmosphere, that things could be more laid back. But, but, it's about understanding the truth better. It's about understanding the philosophy that you want to run your life with better. It's about understanding what kind of relationships you want to be in and what part you want to play in them, whether it is with other people, with money or yourself. <laughs> Utilize this time. And that's about it. That's everything I had to tell you. I want to thank you for sharing and watching. I want to remind you that if you want a private um, lesson or a reading with me, you can find all the details for contacting me at the end of the slide. This is Neil Feiler. May you shine on in these times of turbulence and shine strong. May we live long and prosper. Bye-bye.